Hello and welcome to The Voice of Todd. I'm Tom and today we're going to talk about Cyberpunk 2077 and some details that came out of their recent financial conference that they held, I believe, on Thursday. I did listen to some of it. It's some very interesting bits in there. I'm not going to go over the whole thing. We're just going to focus on the refunds with this video. Let's talk about Cyberpunk 2077. We're over here on Metro Gaming um, with a, a story, as I say, about the refunds. Cyberpunk 2077 refunds claimed by less than 1 in 10 players. That's a lot less than I was expecting. New data from CD Projekt reveals how much money Cyberpunk 2077 has made the company and how much it lost through refunds. Despite the highly controversial launch, Cyberpunk 2077 is still technically been a success story for CD Projekt, at least in terms of sales, with it making all its money back on pre-orders alone. Which is quite a hefty feat. Uh, the option for refunds however threatened to put a massive dent in that financial success, but if new data is to be believed it looks like the majority of players opted to hold on to their copies and wait for eventual fixes. That's what I did. And honestly, I don't regret it. I had a lot of fun with this. My review is up. Um, it, I'll link it at the end of the video if you want to check it out. Um, but I was lucky to play this on an Xbox Series X because I got my hands on one at launch. And while it isn't next gen, it, it looks good, but it I need the next gen thing to come out for this game. And that's really when I want to get into it. But from a first playthrough, with all the bugs and problems that it has, I didn't experience many and I had a lot of fun. But back to the article. CD Projekt has published its earnings report for 2020 and within its 90 pages it covers the refunds and how much money it lost as a result. Analyst Mike Futter has broken down the numbers on Twitter and in total refunds cost the company around 51 million dollars which is about 36.7 million pounds. It's certainly a big number. But when compared to CD Projekt's overall profits and Cyberpunk 2077 sales numbers, it hasn't made much of an impact. In 2020, the game sold over 13.7 million units. Now, are they calling 2020 December? Because that's when the game launched. Or are they calling 2020 the financial year, which probably runs to about April, at a guess. So there's a bit of a difference there. But it's clearly sold big in the, what, five months that it's been available? With 73% of them being digital sales, that's huge. And 56 being on the PC version, as broken down in CD Projekt's financial presentation. And remember, it only released in December at the very tail end of the year. So maybe that is just for 2020. I mean, there was a lot of hype for this game at the time. 13.7 million copies sold in 2020. That will be all the pre-orders. Wow. I mean, that's that's ridiculous. In, what, three weeks? If that's to be believed? That's crazy. Considering CD Projekt's total game sales through 2020, which includes Cyberpunk, clearly, and The Witcher, made $563.7 million. Wow almost 406.3 million pounds it means the refunds made up only nine percent of those sales that's lower than i was expecting i was expecting something more around sort of 15 20 percent if everything was to be believed from the media and twitter and all the stuff that you probably shouldn't believe anyway on the surface level this sounds like good news for CD Projekt, but as Futter points out this is still unlikely to win back the favor of upset investors since share prices have dropped significantly and are as low now as they were at the beginning of 2019. I wonder if the boost... What was going on in 2019? Was Cyberpunk meant to be out at that point and then delayed? And then 2019 is when... Oh, end of 2019. But 2019 is when The Witcher TV series was released, so that's probably going to have given them a little bit of a boost. Um, Mike's tweets are there if you want to follow him, if you want to check them out. Uh, I'm going to leave them on screen. I'm not going to go through them here, we're just going to st uh, stick with the article, so pause this if you want to read them, you're, you're more than welcome to. 
Um, but as for the game's future, CD Projekt CEO Adam Kaczynski stated during a financial conference call that the PS5 and Xbox Series XS versions, versions, which are still on course to release later this year, will have a significant influence on sales and the general atmosphere about Cyberpunk 2077, as transcribed by Twinfinite. I'm going to go out on a limb here, and this is just my personal thoughts. I think he's just trying to inflate and boost the idea of what these are going to do. We don't know how they're going to look. There's so much potential for them to do stuff, but if the base game isn't fixed, if all the bugs aren't sorted out, if the game still has problems and there's things that just don't work, the menu's clunky, the crafting system is clunky, the, the, the clothing and the limited personalization in what you wear based on the stats that you get all of this stuff needs to be fixed in fact i'm going to link my review there's going to be a little card at the end of the video if you want to check it out um so much needs to be fixed for this game on top of the next gen version if that isn't done i don't think there will be a massive sales increase i think sales will increase and more people will have had those consoles at the time but this isn't a brand new version of the game my understanding is this is just a, a free download to to give you next gen editions unless this is a brand new game i don't know now i don't think it is it doesn't say that it is but they're talking about next gen versions who knows i still think it's an update uh, there won't be any sort of public beta test but the company has brought in external contractors to assist with a large portion of the team approximately 20 percent is continuing to improve the current versions of the game which it needs to 20% seems a little low. They've clearly got 80% working on other projects or the future content for this. Cyberpunk 2077 is available for PC, Xbox One and PS4 and Stadia. Don't forget Stadia. Everybody else has. PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series XS versions are planned to release this year. PS5 and Xbox Series XS versions are planned to release this year. I, you can still play it on both of those consoles. Granted, it's still not on the PlayStation Store, which blows my mind. So you cannot download it digitally on PlayStation. For, what, five months in and it's still not there? That's I can't get my head around that. And it sold these kind of numbers? That's crazy. Um, I, yeah, I think that that's just strange wording. Who knows, hopefully we'll find something out in the summer, maybe E3 or something like that about the next gen version, I'd like to see what it looks like. It's not an overall ugly game, I just think there's a lot of tweaks that can be made for next gen. I still have faith that they can do it, but I, I have thoughts on things that need changing. As I say, review at the end if you want to dive deeper into those and but yeah there's, there's some really interesting stuff there i think the, the refunds especially only being one in ten players and all right nine percent of the sales or sorry nine percent of the overall income of last year it's not bad it could have been a hell of a lot worse but anyway thank you very much for watching uh, we're going to get back to doing more of these Todd Reason News videos. I really do enjoy doing these. Uh, just other things have got in the way. There is things happening, changing, other stuff I want to talk about. Uh, so we're going to try and get back to some sort of normality with this main channel. But yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully you found some of this interesting and it wasn't all just a jumbled ramble. But I will see you in the next one.